um, I do feel that in Korea there is an individual mindset a lot, as in you don't really care about other people. Mm. So when you're in Seoul and you're in the subway, in the bus... Why is it that complicated, Korea? It, it becomes complicated because it, it doesn't feel like everyone cares so much about each other yeah. as you would expect from like a collective country. Yeah. While that feeling in the Netherlands is slightly different, I do feel that people tend to uh, find like comfort with strangers, yeah. like w- random conversation or interaction or say hello. Mm. So there's a whole different way of collectivism, right? Yeah. But but they do value their individual uh, opinion and decision-making freedom. Mm. I think that's where it becomes individual and collective. Mm. So in the Netherlands, uh, you really want to have your the freedom to say what you want to say, to do what you want to do, even though the rules say this and, and there's no logic to the rule, then we still think it's okay, for example, to jaywalk, mm. like cross the street, ignore the red light because there are no cars coming. Mm. Well, maybe in Korea, it's more like, no, this is, yeah, no, we, we just, it, it's not, it would be rude to cross whether it makes no sense or not. Mm. Like that's maybe where it becomes different, where we become more individual. Am I still making sense? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm try- I'm, this is coming quickly too complicated, maybe. Ah, but... And also, I don't want to generalize and I don't want to stereotype a whole country. I have one sincere question. Yeah. Really sincere question. As a YouTuber West, uh, from from Western country, uh-huh. uh, who talk about Korea and other things, there's a lot of guys like uh, uh, from, from Western country who is uh, like a YouTuber, uh, talk about the Korean culture and everything. What I feel is, uh, <clears throat> for me, I am allowed to say that Korean, usually Koreans, they're really nationalist, really, really nationalist. Uh, uh, so uh, this YouTuber, they are kind of scared to like uh, talk negatively about Korea sometime. <laughs> I, I don't know. I see that. Maybe I guess maybe I'm wrong. But uh, I don't know. I kind of feel because they they really avoid to like uh, talk bad. Uh, for example, there's a lot of issues like Dokdo and everything, you know. Yeah. They so uh, they they avoid avoid to talk about this kind of subject because they are they don't know really well about the that uh, that like a story and uh, like a Japanese colonialization and every, everything. So they they are really like a try try hard to avoid uh, to talk about this kind of subject uh, and uh, you 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 do that also. Um, <sighs> no, I think this is where Ike Bart, so my channel's name, distinguishes itself from pretty much a lot of influencers or YouTubers or creators, mm. whatever they want to be called in Korea. Um, do want to get back to the point of there are a lot of Western males. Yeah. Um, who are influencers. I mean... Especially males, why? <laughs> I mean, so. I, I don't know. I mean, nobody stops women from starting a YouTube channel. Yeah. So, you, uh, yeah, you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Because I do this from my personal interest, not because I'm a white Western male. Mm. Like, I, I'm just si- sincerely interested in um, human geography, uh, identity, conflicts, war, mm. political science. Mm. Uh, that's what I study back home, and mm. that's that's what I what I want to apply to my own uh, work field. Mm. Um, I do actually know more female influencers, honestly, mm. although they are more active on TikTok and Instagram than YouTube. Mm. Um, from Western countries or Middle Eastern countries or South American countries, so with a big following. Mm. But mm, I mean, it is very difficult in Korea to be completely honest. And honest, honesty mm. means <clears throat> that sometimes you uh, say something negative or say so- give your real opinion. Like, yeah. let's say a, a stupid, simple example. I don't like this food. <laughs> There's a big chance that you will be attacked for that or you will be canceled or people will write negative things in the comment section. Mm. Because there's this... I don't want to say it's a trend, but there's a lot of... Um, there's a force going through the country <laughs> that want influencers, especially foreign influencers, to talk positive about Korea as much as possible. Hmm. I don't know exactly where this comes from. Maybe it's the people who kind of enjoy watching 
people saying something positive about country like Korea. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, where the funds come from, like the government. They come from army. <laughs> Art books, yeah, well, for example. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, like I I don't want to be part of that. Mm. I just want to make what I want to make. Yeah. And whether it's controversial or not, uh, because I'm a I'm I'm a documentary maker. I'm a doc documentarian. I make mini documentaries, and right now I'm working on a project which is called Welcome to My Dong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I explore I every neighborhood in Seoul. There are 467 of them. Yeah. And my only goal is to to document the neighborhood as as much as possible, like history, culture, sometimes food if it's important for the story, mm. uh, the people. Mm. Uh, why the neighborhood is the neighborhood and what kind of charm it has mm. and, and try to experience that myself by either talking to local Koreans mm. or local foreigners who live in the neighborhood mm. or an expert who knows something about that neighborhood. Mm. And it, it often happens that I have to cover a subject that is controversial. Could be a, a president who was shot. Could yeah. be a, a, a colonial uh, a building where... A, a guy from Japan lived during colonial times and did something bad. Yeah. Could be a Korean artist, like a, a, a poet who was pro-Japanese mm. at the same time, one of the best poets in mm. Korea. Um, you know, it, 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 it can be the way you talk about, let's say, President Park Chung-hee. Mm. Some people say he's a dictator. Mm. Other people say he's a great dictator. Mm. Some people say, no, he's not a dictator. Mm. And... Whatever you say, whatever or which option you choose, it will never be satisfying for everyone. Mm. And this is challenging. So what I see many creators do in Korea, they try to stay away from that as much as possible. I really feel that. That's one. And then two, it's just a business model in Korea by always being positive about Korea. Mm. You will get invited to like fundings. Mm. You get sponsorships. Mm. Like it's it's e it becomes easier to get money, so it's a it's a business model, and they know how to, how to live. Huh? <laughs> but it's kind of it became kind of obvious in Korea. Like uh, if you say this, this, and this, then people will like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's not so much about uh, like a subject. Like it it becomes far from reality, in my opinion. Mm. It just becomes a skit, a, a play. Mm. Right. Both both parties, like the audience likes to watch it because it's going to be positive anyway, so there's no boodam. Mm. And and the creator makes it because there's no backlash. <laughs> mm. So win-win. I, I, I think uh, I was living in Tahiti. Do you know Tahiti? No. Tahiti is a French Polynesian island. It was uh, col colonized uh, by uh, France uh, for, for I don't know how much year, but uh, it was uh, colon colonized. Ta Tahiti? Tahiti. Oh, yeah, no, I know, of course, yeah. Yeah. So um, mm, what I felt is kind of, uh, what I felt with the uh, Taitian people is kind of similar than uh, Korean people because they kind of lose their own identity. So if if you go to Tai Chi, uh, it's not really, it, it doesn't really feel like uh, Maori culture. It's more American, more French, more, a little bit Chinese. So... Um, I really felt that uh, they get really hurt e easily uh, when I criticize about the, their food and their like culture. Honestly, I don't like a uh, Titan Titan food at all. Like mm -hmm. because I'm Korean, I like spicy food, and uh, it's just my, not my taste. Uh, the, there is no offense. It's just not, not my taste. Uh, maybe it's great food for uh, a lot of people, not for me. But they uh, the thing is they don't want to hear even if it's just a subject I, a subjective. Uh, Opinion, you know. So um, I think uh, why why I compare with the Thai tea because um, I I believe that the Korean people are kind of like this because uh, they we kind of lose uh, our uh, identity because uh, it's kind of uh, Westernized this this country and then uh, it's kind of Japanese Japanese uh, this country. So I um, I think it's come from uh, this kind of like a uh, this kind of thing. How do you think? Mm. I mean, when you talk about identity, yeah. um, the Netherlands struggles a lot with identity these days. Oh, uh, why? We have uh, traditions that are now being criticized from the outside world as as uh, 
racist, for example. There's one um, holiday we have. It's called Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Yeah, it's like uh, the original version of Santa Claus. Yeah. So man, a saint comes in our story from uh, Spain on a boat, um, brings a lot of helpers and they bring gifts to people at home. Now the helpers are all uh, black faced, painted. Okay. That's how the tradition uh, went for decades. And now that's been criticized. And now there are a lot of Dutch people who are um, against changing it. Can I see a black face? Uh, yeah. How can I type? <coughs> Do you want to type? Uh, I can type it for you. It's heavy. Maybe not heavy for you. That's okay. That's <laughs> all right. <laughs> this is where the gym helps. <laughs> so this discussion has been going on for years now. And here we go. Oh, Image. Image, please. There you go. Ah. Yeah. So on the left top corner, you see... You know the new the newer version. It's it's not completely black anymore. It, it doesn't have the stereotypical uh, red lips, uh, earrings. Um, so it's changing, which in my opinion is good because I kind of agree with you know the negative opinions. On I don't this. understand why they paint uh, in black. Be because um, yeah. the story is that they come through the chimney. Chimney. Uh, chimney. Like Santa Claus, the chimney. Okay. Okay. And then. Because of the coal and the, the black powder, they become black, ah, basically. Okay. That's the story. Um, anyway, it's it's super complicated. It's more complicated than I explain now. The point is Dutch people don't want to give up on this tradition because they <laughs> think it's part of their identity. It's who they are as Dutch people. This is what we've been doing, you know, for a long time. But then if you if you look further back in, in the history, mm. you'll see that this tradition also started at some point, and before that it didn't exist. Yeah. So how much and how far do you want to look back to consider it part of your identity? Mm. And I think identities are forever evolving. We are influenced not only by internal factors in our country, but these days because we're so globalized, we're influenced by external factors as well. Mm. These days in Korea, uh, in the Netherlands, you see a lot of Korean restaurants. There are a lot of kimchi in the supermarkets. You can buy soju at every corner of the street. Yeah, kimchi for, was not relevant before. <laughs> it was, this kind of identity. For, oh, yeah. for, for example, that's... a modern thing, yeah. So it, it, things change. And and I personally think it's nice to ride the roller coaster the way it goes yeah. instead of uh, being so aware of all the changes and try to stop it. Because mm. I think that will make you more unhappy because eventually it will change. Mm. So in this case, uh, yeah, people had their moment. They could say something. Now it's done. It's changing. Like it's a children's festival anyways, and the children don't really care that much. But visually, it make me think that uh, like, uh, I don't know, you can provocate uh, some racist issue. 100%. Because it 100%. looks like, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a character. Yeah, exaggerated version of a, like a like a black people. Yeah, no, no. I, I mean, if you ask my opinion, yes. Yeah, because you know the, you know, <laughs> it's exactly like. I mean, just look at it, for example. Yeah. Yeah, with uh, even it's, hair, like a curly hair. Santa Claus doesn't have a yeah, curly hair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that I thought was uh, like, uh, they try to make them up uh, up uh, like a uh, black people, not at all like a Santa Claus. There's no contact about that. It's, um, <laughs> it, it, that's, that's why I don't mind it's changing. Mm -hmm. So what you see here is uh, what it used to be. Yeah. These days, most municipalities and provinces in the Netherlands, they have the, uh, the upgraded version. So different color, rainbow uh, peat, mm -hmm. as we call them, or red peat or blue peat or like that, the black stripes. Yeah. Um, and, and then it's fine, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but it's changing. It's just that people don't want to give up on their traditions, oh. whether it makes sense or not. Personal opinion. If there is a lot of a, like a, a mix of culture in one country, it's really good for a good for a culture. I think uh, art and culture. What what I, is what I believe? For example, France, Germany, Netherlands. There is a lot of a, like in, in, interracial culture and a, like a. Even even apart from ethnia, there is a lot of like influence from uh, other European country, something like this. So um, it makes a lot of variety and it's good for art and culture. For example, uh, like Netherlands, like uh, there is a 
um, I really like the the group uh, the XX. <laughs> the XX? Yeah. Oh, the the singers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love I love them. The XX and uh, other other like a uh, musician and yeah. I I heard that, that there was a lot of like um like a competition and concurrence between between uh, like artist is really like a big uh, market of art uh, like a musician is really big there mm -hmm. and so it's make a good result like rap scene in America because uh, there's a lot of uh, like a rapper in America so it makes a big competition so it's make a good great like right. a rapper yeah and also like uh, they are kind of uh, as they like a uh, they are open uh, from uh, from other culture and they don't refuse they don't like uh, try to maintain uh, their original like a uh, culture it helps like a uh, japanese japanese cuisine like uh, for example they observe like a uh, western western cuisine so it make a uh, donkatsu donkatsu <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh, it's from uh, like uh, it looks like a uh, cordon bleu pour moi, uh, <laughs> for me it actually is from germany i believe yeah. Yeah, the, I had the schnitzel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they transform. They transform, right? And for example, uh, Netherlands. I'm I'm a really big fan of uh, fight sports. So uh, there's a lot of good kickboxer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I know I know really really well why because uh, there is a lot of like a first generation of a kickboxer. They kind of observe like every martial art from from Japan, from Thailand, and they mix together. Mm -hmm. So uh, they became good. You know? Yes. Yeah. It's not because uh, there there was a uh, like a Dutch martial art and they tried to maintain this this like a tradition. But no, they tried to like observe other culture and they mix and uh, they made uh, their own thing. And by the way, uh, Dutch, Dutch kickboxers they're really killer. Yeah, uh, they're good. Uh, one of my uh, good friends in the Netherlands, he is uh, Kudan in Taekwondo. Ah, and uh, it exists. Uh, he's one of the first nine foreign people. <laughs> I didn't even know that there is a Gudan. Gudan. Yeah, it's the highest. Ah, huh. it's red, red belt. Um, I don't know. I don't know. So, so there are two uh, two different sections in Taekwondo, right? Yeah. It it split up because the founder of Taekwondo yeah. was uh, not beloved when Korea was very conflictual with North Korea. Mm. Anyway, uh, it's a long, long story. <laughs> but anyway, so he's part of the or original uh, Taekwondo group. Yeah, with the original uh, amount of ku ku dance. Yeah, and I think the new one has even added until ten or more. I, I'm not sure exactly. I don't want to talk about it because I don't know. But <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, what what my point is that uh, th there are a lot of Dutch people interested in martial arts. Why? Security, we're, we're security problem. No, Do no. All uh, self defense. Why we need self defense? I think it's. Um, well, in the Netherlands, <laughs> you might need self-defense at some point on the street. It, it, there is no camera. There are cameras, but not as many as in, in South Korea. As sure. We're not, a, sure, we're, yeah. as usual, we're not a surveillance state. People hate to be filmed for so-called privacy reasons. Yeah, privacy, yeah. Like uh, yeah, but you know, it's just a common yeah. story. Um, and also, even if, if you're filming with CCTV, then there are also laws that protect the people because you didn't ask permission to film them and use it against them in court. So, um, but there is just simply more violence in the Netherlands. Mm. You know, there's more physical violence at some, I think everyone at some point has either seen a fight or been directly involved in the fight. Did you fight? Um, in the street? Yeah, I, I actually, um, I, I spent one night in, in jail. <laughs> oh yeah? Yeah, okay. uh, not because, so th th so there's an interesting story. Uh, I was going out in a bar, and I saw my one of my I'm friends. Uh, no, Nijmegen, different city on the east side. Uh, my friend was having a drink, and, and he was fighting with someone. And then suddenly, that other person that we didn't know, he slapped my friend, like in the face with with a flat hand. Mm. And and it's it's kind of how do you say that for a man maybe degrading yeah, if yeah. you slap with the flat hand yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'd rather be punched with the fist <laughs> so I, I was like what's going on my friend is, is being hit by someone so I walked over and I started talking to the other guys like why do you hit my friend mm. and I instead of him talking back to me he just looked at me like straight into the eyes and then after maybe a minute just complete silence he just bam, he hit me full in the face with a fist Yeah. and after that I, I was just uh, all black so we ended up like <laughs> get, dancing on the ground. Yeah, I was like 
like my face was full of blood. Okay. Uh, my glass fell on the ground. Um, and then uh, they, we were kicked out of the club, both of us. And I went to the police. Hmm. So I said, hey, I, I, wanna, uh, I wanna sue this man because he hit me first. And I, I believe I didn't hit back. Hmm. And then the police said, okay, sure. So they arrested him. So what did he do, the other guy? He sued me instead. Okay. He said, no, he is the one who hit first. And now there you go. It's his word against mine. Mm. And, you know, Netherlands, hardly any cameras. So the police looked for cameras in the club. Well, of course, they were all conveniently turned off. Mm. So there was no proof other than a few eyewitnesses, which were all on my side, by the way, but it's not enough to win a case. Mm. So uh, we were both sued mm. and the police had no choice but to put us in, in jail for one night. Yeah. And then the officer came to me after a few hours, uh, sobering up. He said, well, uh, this is what you can do. You can either keep suing him and you have to stay here because he will probably sue you back. Yeah, you, sure. So you have to stay here for a couple of days because we have to figure this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you drop uh, the charges and you both can leave. But yeah. But how we can refund your time? You were in jail and you lost your time for one day. Yeah. How, how we can refund? He should he should pay uh, how we can. It's, it's really weird to... Especially because he hit first, twice. So mm. my friend and then me second. Yeah. Um, there's nothing you can do unless I, I keep suing him, right? If I if I don't drop the charges, then we have to go to court. Yeah, I have to get you hire a lawyer. A lawyer. Expensive. It's going to cost money. Yeah. It's going to and uh, because he no, sued me too, I have to stay in jail too because I'm a, a potential uh, aggressor. Uh, yeah, <laughs> bad guy. <laughs> so. Um, so I would say for fun, like I spent one night in jail, but it doesn't mean I, you know, it's, 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 there's no stamp on my, uh, how do you say that? Like uh, yeah, your, like your, your, my his personal history, crime, crime yeah. history. Yeah. So I'm, I'm completely clean, hmm. but I had to spend one night in jail and they played uh, Pink Floyd, <laughs> my favorite band. They had like a, a, like a little magazine. In jail? In jail, yeah. It was like, <laughs> everything was like iron, like one toilet, one iron bed. Uh, one uh, female magazine like for some nice pretty women. <laughs> You're uh, alone in the in the in the jail. Alone in the jail, and it's funny because the jail was right next to my home where I lived. It's like less than a minute walking, oh. <laughs> and uh, like deep in the basement somewhere. Yeah, that that was an experience. Me too. I was in jail uh, when I was in the military service oh. for two uh two weeks uh-huh you're serious <laughs> <laughs> where did the military police arrested you yeah yeah yeah. what did you do uh it's not it's not jail uh but there's other word because i don't have a like a nothing like you nothing in my crime paper or something like this but mm -hmm. it's kind of like a form of a punishment in the in the army you know there is two types it's, it's, yeah. there is a serious jail uh, there is a, just a uh, some uh, establishment uh, like uh, look like a jail, so I punched one uh, person <laughs> 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 because uh, he annoyed me really a lot. So I just what just um, uh, at that time I wasn't good uh, to trust talk. Uh, I'm still not. I can't. I don't know how to debate like uh, properly with the uh, with the person when I when I get emotional. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't happen anymore for me because maybe I'm I kind of lost my testosterone right now. So <laughs> I'm not alpha male, uh. but uh, before I when I was young, I kind of I was kind of always fighting with with people, a lot of confrontation with people. So uh, so uh, so I couldn't like fight uh, verbally with with this person. So I just punched. I really I really hoped strongly that uh, he got he get knocked out <laughs> but my punch was kind of pillow punch so he was like he just take took the punch and then he said you you think that i i, I can i can punch you you think that i, I can punch you and I, I was like a confrontation with the with the head like this and then there was some some uh, there's some people who said stop <laughs> and then uh, i went to jail and the thing is uh, my experience in jail was horrible because uh, at that jail, um, I couldn't do anything. Uh, like uh, I should stare just in front of me and not not look at the other guys. In that room, uh, I, there was a three person, and uh, we'd sit down the whole day uh, on the floor, 
like a Buddha posture. No, oh, yeah. And uh, we should make a, like a triangle, like a position. Like a, I'm in front of everybody, and there is a <laughs> someone here and here. So uh, I stayed like this for uh, two weeks, and、um, at that time uh, I uh, thought really a lot about myself, and、uh, it kind of helped me,、uh, like a like a Buddha, you know. So、uh, I said to myself, I'm never gonna like aggress <laughs> anymore,、uh, like uh, physically uh, other. I guess I don't know why、uh, I talk about that, but that's a funny know, story. You know, I invited you、uh, to talk about North Korea, but <laughs> we talk, <laughs> about... talk about prison experience. <laughs> but but I but、uh, but I want to ask ask you about、uh, some. Do you, do you like kickboxing? Kickboxing.、Um, I like to watch it sometimes on TV, but I don't follow it.、Oh, okay. Yeah. Because in. <laughs> Maybe you are not interested.、Uh, you you don't know anybody, but there is a lot of big, big, big kickboxer in in Netherlands, like a Lamont Decker. Do you know Badahari? Yeah, Badahari is a Moroccan. Moroccan, but yeah, <laughs> he's he he's moved. Uh huh. He moved. Why in Netherlands? I still I still li- like him. Ah,、um, you know when you, I'm not sure how it works, but I think people、uh, from Morocco who immigrate to the Netherlands,、um, there is no li-、uh, It's not related by a colonization or something. No, no, just、uh, just just economic opportunities, and、mm-hmm. the Netherlands have a good immigration system. Okay, so it was maybe relatively、uh, easy to to integrate, get a Dutch passport.、Um, there are like big Moroccan communities in the Netherlands,、mm. um, but but at some point, I think they they get to choose whether they keep their Dutch passport or their Moroccan passport,、mm. and then some choose Moroccan passport. Yeah, but they speak Dutch, and you know they they think Dutch in a lot of ways. I don't know exactly how with it works, Moroccan accent. Yeah,、mm. yeah. There are some、uh, professional football players, for example, who can choose eventually to to play for a Moroccan national team or for the Dutch national team.、Mm. There's、uh, no Algerian. Um, not as many. Okay, not as many. Because in France, the majority of immigrants are Algerian. Ah,、uh, there is a lot of Moroccan also, but、um, Alger- Algerian is uh, like uh, majority of immigrant.、Uh, like in in Germany, is、uh, Turkish. Honestly, don't know much about this, but we have a lot of Turkish as well.、Mm. Eastern Europeans、uh, from Poland,、um, but also from、uh, former Yugoslavia. Because、oh. you can also follow the conflicts, right, in the world. Yeah. Like whenever there is a conflict, and many people from that country. So these days, many Ukrainians come to the Netherlands.、Hmm. So in in ten years, we will have a big Ukrainian、uh, diaspora. Is that how you call it? Like community. Yeah. So yeah. So you come to stay in Korea for forever, kind of, or you want to come back? I don't have a concrete plan. I'm married, and I and like it here.、Young. And I'm relatively young, <laughs> but but I love Korea. I really、uh, consider it my second home. Yeah, I don't miss the Netherlands culturally.、Mm. I miss my family and friends.、Mm. So if there's ever a reason for me to go、friends? back to the Netherlands, it's my friends and family in the Netherlands. Ah, okay. Yeah, but other than that, I'm completely comfortable in Korea. Oh, okay. And、um, it's really I I really have a desire to travel.、Uh, Finally, we talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really want to travel、uh, in North Korea, but、uh, I don't have visa to travel in North Korea. But、uh, you have really a、uh, big chance. But、uh, you don't, you don't, you didn't pre- proceed、uh, any paper to tra- to be able to travel in North Korea, right? Yes, As a European. No, you have to apply for a visa. Yeah, like, like, like most countries,、um, and you travel through China. So you go to Beijing first. Sorry, but tourist visa is、um, yeah, we didn't we don't need to like proceed the paper no for three months. You mean in China or in North Korea? Even for for every country. Oh,、no? uh, but that doesn't apply to every country. Like for example, in China now recently they changed it, but、uh, before last time I was in China, I had to apply for a visa. Okay. To enter the country. Even for a short term. Even for a short time. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So、um, even when I like back in the day, now was it 2017? I traveled through Asia. It was like backpack trip for six months. I had to get a visa for almost every country. 
Oh, okay. Vietnam, Thailand even, uh, Cambodia. Uh, China was quite expensive, so I had to apply for the visa here in Seoul, in uh, Myeongdong. Yeah. Uh, a couple of hundred bucks. Um, but North Korea, you apply through the travel agency, which mm. was Cordio Tours at the time that yeah. I used, uh, and they get your visa. And then almost last minute, they will let you know whether they gave you your visa because they do a screening test, see who you are, yeah. are you a journalist, are yeah. you do you come here to film? Like they check everything. Mm. So yeah, that's but it's, it's overall it's quite easy. You just pay the tourist, uh, the tour company, and they arrange it for you. Mm. So uh, was it good uh, the travel? I saw your uh, I saw your video, but uh, honest um, honest honest opinion was it? Uh, do you recommend to other guys to travel in North Korea? Ah, uh, that is a very difficult question for many reasons. Um, I don't think these days it's allowed to travel to North Korea still because of Corona. They close the borders. Okay. Um, for Koreans, South Koreans, and for Americans, it's not allowed anyways. Because mm. since Otto Warmbier and since uh, Trump, Donald Trump, uh, during his presidency, he he uh, stopped Americans from traveling to North Korea. Mm. Um, nah, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Because it's boring? It's not boring at all. Oh, yeah? I think experiencing North Korea, even the the best part of North Korea, I should say, mm. is not boring. Okay. It's so surreal um, that that whole experience is quite um, intriguing, mm. I would say. You, you, you can't experience it, that same thing anywhere else in the world. Mm. But um, you should be well aware of which country you're going to. You should be well aware of the risks. Mm. You should be... Uh, well aware of the human rights situation in the country. Mm. And I think for many people, it's just ethically or morally uh, not a good decision to go to North Korea, knowing that the money might end up in the pockets of the government. Uh, and then we know where that money goes to. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Money, money what? Like, I mean, money that you pay on a trip to North Korea, right? Uh. That for a small amount probably goes to the guides and, and some mm. uh, people live in Pyongyang, but to the guy most of the money goes to the government mm. and and the government spends most of their budget on uh, you know a weapon development yeah uh, becoming a nuclear power in the region so i it's up to the people if they think they want to see it mm. and they can uh like i wouldn't stop them mm. um but it's it's quite important to know what what is going on in north korea like don't don't assume that what you're going to see is going to be anywhere close to um, the complete reality of a country, of mm. that country. Did, did you feel like uh, they kind of act to show that uh, they are rich to a uh, tourist who comes in, in Pyongyang? Because there is kind of rumor. Yeah. Even between the South Korean and the Southern Korean, we say that uh, they act. People uh, in Pyongyang, they are kind of all actor like a Truman show. Yeah, no, they're not actors. I mean, it's almost dehumanizing to say that North Koreans are actors mm. or a really big compliment because they can act super well. <laughs> um, but no, there are like a couple of million people living in the city, Pyongyang, and to say that they are all acting, mm. no, you, you, what you see is, you, you get to see, you get to look through a small window and what you see is probably the best. Mm of the best in North Korea. Mm. Like these people, uh, they are probably the most loyal people. They have like generations uh, in their family that have been, have done something good for the country, like revolutionary. Uh, maybe their grandparents have fought in the Korean War, mm. killed many Japanese during colonial times. You know, like, like you look at the best of the best. Mm. Um, but to say, no, I, they, they're not acting and these rumors can simply be uh, killed by asking a couple of North Koreans from Pyongyang mm. and they will tell you that it, it's just maybe weird to see, but most of it is, is quite real. And yes, it's no coincidence that um, they show you this, that and that because they show you what they want to show you. Mm. They're not going to show you the concentration camps mm. or the poor uh, suburbs of Pyongyang or other towns. They're not going to show you that. 
at the same time, it's really expensive to hire that much of a people to make them acting. <laughs> well, no, exactly. It's not possible. It, it's, I just literally finished reading a book yesterday. It's called The Kim Dynasty, written by a Dutch writer. It's about the history of North Korea. Yeah. And uh, people, uh, whenever uh, one of the leaders died, uh, Kim Jong-il, Kim Il-sung, yeah. you see a lot of people crying and act historically on the street. And then... You can grab them, yeah. And then... Um, um, People say, see, they're, they're like, it's all acting. It's it's a mixture of a lot of things. Mm. Many North Koreans don't know any better. They know, they consider their leader as a god. And there's probably a, a mixture of sincere feelings, but also uh, group acting. You, you see everyone around you crying. So you, you tend to, you know that something is wrong if you don't cry. You know there might be consequences. Yeah. Uh, they also know they can be punished for not showing enough love or mourn. Um, so yeah, there's in that case there is a, a part of it is maybe acting, but not completely. Mm. And, and yeah, North Korea is just such a complicated country, and it's so easy to to create rumors rumors about this country because there's not yes, much information yeah. coming out yeah. or going in. Yeah. And during the the famine, the Great Famine uh, in the nineties, right? Many North Koreans fled the country, mm. and. If you read the stories, it was not so much because they were looking for, like they knew that there was a better world outside. It was more survival instinct. They had no other option than to escape and find food mm. to survive. Mm. Now, um, now, much later, there's a lot of DVDs, like media going around in the black market in North Korea, showing K-dramas, uh, like showing movies from... Hollywood. You think it's possible to watch uh, as a North North Korean to, uh, the K drama? They well, yeah. I mean, many North Koreans they were uh, triggered um, by these movies. They watch it because they have, for example, they have like record players or they have um, DVD players, and they use them to watch uh, propaganda movies, right, from, from yeah. their own country. But they can also use it to watch a movie. Oh. From Hollywood, from South Korea. What I heard is uh, one time that they watched it. Um, it. It's not that black and white. There are, of course, consequences that are being caught, so they they have to be careful. Mm. So what what I heard also, uh, what I read, is that uh, sometimes the, the North Korean government, they turn off electricity, so they cannot take out the DVD, mm. the CD out of the DVD player. So if they were watching some propaganda video, the government can see, hey, you were watching this, right? That means that uh, randomly they, they cut electricity on purpose and then they, they, go, uh, they come through home. And yeah, they... that, that happened. So that's why these days they watch, uh, they watch foreign media on uh, USBs or like, like little cards, right? So you, you know when you go to Dongmyo Flea Market, you have these uh, cassette shops like old music stores, yeah. and they sell also these little like USB thingies with music on it. Or I didn't see that. Oh, you didn't see it? Well, anyway, that's a way uh, for them uh, to prevent the government from finding out what they're watching. So there are ways. I mean, of course there are ways. There, there are, there's always a way. Uh, it's really it's scary. Difficult. It is. The way that they control, like they cut the electricity is yeah. smart. Like, do you do you imagine the pressure that the people watching uh, the K drama and then the city is stuck in the in the inside and then they come? I do. I I, I actually can't imagine it. It's beyond my my imagination. Mm. It really is. It's sad. I mean, the reality is sad. But um, as you said, uh, North Korea. What happened in in real in North Korea is so mysterious, and uh, nobody can really tell what happened. Kind of nobody, but uh, you know the the what what uh, her name? Uh, Park the, Yeon-mi. Yeah, Park Yeon Mi. Um, there's a, a lot of like YouTuber who talked that uh, no, uh, she's a propaganda, but it's not exactly what happened. She exaggerated for her business. Like for example, uh, she even said that uh, I uh, I should eat uh, like a butterfly, <laughs> and insect uh, because I was starving and other thing, a really dramatic thing. Uh, but 
You know, in in South Korea, there's a lot of like a North Korea, North Korea refugee. It's not what they they say. It's not. Yes, North Korea is really poor, but at the same time, it's not that worst. You know, it's not butterfly thing. Um, uh, okay, so first of all, uh, when you talk or when you listen to a refugee, you need to know when they escaped North Korea. Yeah, that is true also because. Like I said, uh, during the 90s, it was the big famine. Mm. Hundreds and thousands of North Koreans died because they couldn't eat. Mm. That that in itself is, is horrible. So the people who escaped from that time, they have horrible stories about uh, e eating whatever they could eat. Mm. There are stories that uh, they're eating like remaining uh, mice, corn, mm. from cow, cow uh, shit, <laughs> okay. yeah, just to survive cow. like in camps or okay. so... And also Yomi Park, yeah, I know, I know the controversy. I, I haven't read too much about it, but I, uh, I would say I take it with a grain of salt, mm. and because she is on a mission, right? She's an activist. But what people seem to forget is there are thousands of others North Koreans mm. who, more, uh, how do you say that, uh, below the radar, share their stories, mm. and they don't get as much attention, but the stories are there, mm. and the stories are real. Like she can exaggerate whatever she wants, but we can also listen to the other 2,000 or four or 10,000 North Korean refugees who have no need to get all the media attention because there's also a risk mm. if they still have family in North Korea that they will be punished mm. in North Korea for them <clears throat> speaking out. Plus, uh, North Korean speaking out in South Korea is also not as easy as it sounds because Sometimes they, they do miss North Korea because it's their home country. Mm. They have their families there. They grew up there. They went to school, uh, had jobs. Surely. Hobbies. Like it's, it's, family. It's, 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 it's your country, right? Mm. Like let's say you escape South Korea because the president was a, a terrible dictator. Yeah. But still, you miss your hometown, Jonju. You miss the bibimbap that you ate around the corner. You miss the, your school friends that mm. you played with on the street during break times. So... But it's almost impossible for them to express that because it's not the story that people want to hear. Mm. But all all North Koreans that I've met, they all had like terrible stories from different times that they escaped the country. Um, Kim Jong Il made things worse. Kim Jong Un definitely didn't make things better. Mm. Uh, they, he hired security. He, he put more guards at the at the border with China. Like things didn't get easier at all. It, it just became more difficult for North Koreans to escape. That means that uh, <clears throat> you did have an uh, occasion to talk with uh, Northern Korea apart from uh, the moment that uh, you traveled in uh, North Korea? Not uh, like in North Korea, um, you can talk to North Koreans, especially if you speak some Korean. But you don't expect any political conversations. It's mostly about... Ah, they just talked really far, really quick about their status uh, of a politic. No, not not at all. Oh, not at all. No, yeah, no, no, I no. I, you shouldn't even ask that because you put no. them on the spot. No, it's scary. It's Yeah, you put, you, you put them at risk. Uh, but you can talk to them. It's not forbidden to talk to them. Mm. You can ask about their hobbies, like what kind of food they like, uh, what's their job. A really casual question. Ca casual things. But would you, <laughs> uh, this, uh, okay, I know in, in North Korea, it's very tempting to, to ask those questions, but would you be, would you like it if, let's say, an American comes to South Korea, meets you on the street randomly, and the first question he asks is, what do you think of Yoon Jo Gyol, Dong Young, mm. or Moon Jin, previous one, or Park Kune? You know, like, it would be kind of confronting questions suddenly, right? To put you on the spot, give your political opinion. Uh, Although yes, it's possible. <laughs> yeah, if it was the first meeting and uh, it, if it was the first question that they ask, uh, there's no offense, but uh, it it should feel quite uh, strange. Just kind of yeah. strange, right? Strange, yeah, yeah. strange. I've like, let's say, a foreigner comes to me in the Netherlands, I ask me, "What do you think of the king?" Like first question, yeah, on the street. So it's first of all, it's not something you would do anywhere. Mm. And then, and, and on top of that, and that's more important, that you put them at risk. Like yeah. you, you, you might put words in their mouth or you, you put them on the spot asking or for, like feeling, making them feel uncomfortable, mm. giving an, an opinion that you want to hear, yeah. but they probably don't give you. Mm. So there's nothing to win anyways. 
It's, but it's, uh, yeah. my question was, uh, did you personally meet Northern Korean? Yeah. Uh, in South Korea or in Europe? I don't know. In, um, in South Korea. How? I did. Um, I, I volunteered in my uh, first year in South Korea um, to, to talk like tutor North Koreans okay. who recently escaped and trying to... I mean, it was about English, but I'm not native. So I say in my case, it was more about sharing information about the world mm. in English while speaking English. Uh, that's how I got in contact with uh, one North Korean. Yeah. And then later, because I started making uh, videos about North Korea, mm. um, you, you just end up in the community somehow. Mm. There are North Korean YouTubers. Mm. Um, there are communities. You want to get information about uh, North Korea. So the best person to ask is a North Korean, right? Mm. And then the first thing you do is approach a North Korean who already is in the media mm. and has not much to lose. Mm. So that's, that's how I did it. That's how I got in contact with North Koreans. Mm. Uh, for some time, I worked as a video uh, producer at NK News, mm. which is uh, a media outlet here in South Korea, but mostly focused on news from about North Korea. Mm. Uh, made some videos for them on YouTube. Can you tell me uh, the kind of one of the worst story that the uh, Northern Korean uh, had uh, in their in their own country, like a worst experience, like a scary experience? I don't know. I'm curious, mm. <laughs> like, butterf like butterfly, <laughs> butterfly story. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, even even if even if I st I'm starving to death, uh, I don't eat butterfly. Huh? I I'm looking for like the the root of a tree or something like this. Why butterfly? For me, I I think what I said earlier. The if you are so hungry that you you want to eat whatever comes out of someone else's body mm. just to survive. That That is pretty horrifying in my opinion. But yeah, Dead body? No, let's say, um, so they're, they're so hungry, right? Like this is a story I read. This, one person was so hungry. You read from a book? From the book. Okay. So it's a quote from an interview in the book. Uh, and that person didn't have anything to eat. And there was a cow. He pooped on the ground. And he was looking for corn, corn in, the, in that poop to eat, mm. to survive. Mm. Uh, but also the, the re-education uh, camps. So if you, if you did something wrong, I was pretty shocked about what is considered wrong. Mm. Uh, well, I cannot give up, come up with an example right now, but could be as uh, you didn't clean the portraits of Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il in your house well enough there's some dust on the frame and, and and you can be punished for that it's what uh what the uh, Park Park young me said said but back young me said said that uh, if it happens they kill it's um, not that level well i wouldn't be surprised if there was a period in north korea where they did kill you for certain actions mm. but now uh now the, the government so there, there is something called like the black market in North Korea. Yeah. People um, have their own trade, try to get things from China, earn some money yeah. just to survive. The government is trying to stop this market because they want everything to be centrally controlled by the government. Uh, they failed, and there was even a form of protest for some time. Mm. Now, now they just let it happen, except when you uh, criticize the leaders, like there's still a few rules. Um or watch some media from other countries. Now, the the punishments are still there and they're still severe, but I think it's, it's not always immediately being killed. Mm. I mean, there, there's no one left if you keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So that, but cases happen, you know, and sometimes yes, um, they need to make an example, mm. being lynched or... You know, I, there are stories like, I mean, it happened, like, but I don't know what the situation is or mm. how it was in the last 10 years. Um, but certain things that were punishable uh, 20 years ago are maybe less punishable today, but still very much punishable. Mm. Just not maybe concentration camp. 
Do you, do you imagine that uh, there will be another generation after Kim Jong-un of a dictation? Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah. Me, I sometimes do, but I don't know. It's wishful thinking. People hope in many cases. Yeah. There's always, uh, there was like the sunshine politics in Korea, right? Uh, there, there's sometimes Kim Jong-un shows goodwill yeah. by doing something good and then then again western countries uh, send money over or humanitarian uh, goods mm. and then again kim jong-un is like screw you guys i'm doing my own thing and in the meantime uh he, he has nuclear weapons at the moment right like mm. nobody believed he would or could do that in a short time mm. and he would stop if we sometimes try to get closer to each other mm. none of that has ever worked mm. ever Mm. Even when Moon Jae-in shaked hands with Kim Jong-un at the border, planted a tree together, uh, visited you know, visit Pyongyang or other presidents did that. But it, yeah, he kept doing what he was always doing mm. and what everyone was afraid of. And the humanitarian situation is h hardly, like almost never discussed mm. when they talk on, on that high level. Um, I, I think <laughs> there's no sign that North Korea will open up or reform their economy. And I don't think that will happen with the new mm. new generation of Kim. I think. Kim dictator. <laughs> I think uh, one time that uh, Elon Musk uh, decided he can delete the country. <laughs> I think. How? <laughs> did, did, you, did you see uh, the influence of, uh, of him uh, when uh, there was a war of uh, Ukraine and, uh, between Russia and Ukraine? Starlink? Yeah. I mean, uh, one individual person's influence it became that big, you know. It's not like a, it's, it's more than a kind of one country's influence, you know. So one, uh, one rich person's technology can influence uh, that much. Uh, so I think uh, this time, uh, this more than uh, like a capitalist like a status of, uh, of earth, one individual's power power is more than like sometimes more than like one country's power. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, I believe that. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's really what what when I see uh, like what what Elon Musk uh, does nowadays, uh, I I really think that he can do <laughs> kind of everything. Like, I think Elon Musk shouldn't become too powerful. He's rather unpredictable, <laughs> especially when it comes to uh, conflicts, war, political statements. I, I don't think he is always the smartest either. Mm, no, um, it's just a one individual person. Yep. Um, well, I, I don't know what he can do for North Korea. Like, I have no clue. <laughs> mm. Can you have a pee break? Yes. Okay. And we're back. <laughs> so... Um, so let's let's. Uh, I was wondering about uh, your like. Uh, it's not about uh, North Korea, but uh, your like a uh, camera, your YouTuber. Mm -hmm. So you you said that um, you don't use a DSLR because uh, when we film with a DSLR, people are kind of contracted. Or uh, yes. So after Sony uh, six four hundred mirrorless camera. Yeah. And um, I, I I just. It's not that it's too complicated, but for the videos that I make, mm. it it just doesn't work. Mm. Like I'm I'm always on the street. I, I need to quickly have a camera available when I talk to people. It's it's very uh, improv. Mm. Action cam works better. Yeah, me too. I really agree because um, DSLR. If we put uh, if we put the, the camera uh, for the case if uh, that we put the, the camera on the tripod and uh, with the all light and everything with the assistant and everything, I think it's good for this kind of case. But not uh, not for the case of, that uh, we handheld. You right. Know? Yeah. It's really not comfortable. Like uh, changing the lens and uh, right. Like, uh, take care about light and something like this and it's shaking uh -huh. I, I'm really not a fan of uh, DSLR that's why I just only use like a camcorder for uh, this podcast uh, but also uh, like a 30 minutes thing uh, is really like <laughs> it's it make me really angry you know I know I know it's really annoying yeah 
I mean, DSLR is for photo for me, uh -huh. not for a video. Yeah, I, I use it only for interviews. Mm. I just, you know, on a, like you said, on the tripod, you fix it, uh, get the right for lens. For that case, really good. For that case, uh, yeah. manual settings. Too. I, I, love, I love cinematography. Sorry. <clears throat> um, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like uh, sparkling? I love sparkling water. Yeah, that's good. But, so I love to play with manual settings. I love to get the best shot outside. I just don't have time for it in my videos, man. Mm. And, and like you said earlier, you said, oh, the quality looks pretty good. Mm. You're a professional. You know the difference between certain <laughs> cameras. Yeah. Most people don't. So mm. if you already think the quality looks good, then most people have no clue that I'm using an action cam. Also, you, you really know that audience doesn't really care about that quality. <laughs> doesn't really care. It's and only videographer who cares about the quality. Exactly. Yeah. And a good videographer can film with whatever he has in the hands. Exactly. Like because I can give my action cam to somebody who never filmed, who has never filmed before, mm. video quality will be shit. Nah. You know, it's weird because it's only turn off, turn on. Yeah. It's all about certain movements. I know when it makes a sound, when it clicks. Mm. I know how to turn it. I know what to film and which moment. Mm. Like this, this is, we're talking about experience now. You, you know, um, I think. Uh, if we are solo to shooting, the content is, uh, uh, we, we should care about uh, more about the content than the uh, quality of the uh, production. I really believe because uh, there's too much thing happen uh, on, uh, in front of my eyes. So uh, I should choose, okay, content or like a sound and uh, image or something like this. We don't care about like a 60 FPS or like a 4, 4K or something like this sometimes, yeah. you know. Uh -huh. But uh, sometimes we, some videographer think too much about those things. So they just uh, like a film some random, like a boring person and interview, you know. It's not good. Uh, if, we, if we are like a solo, like one person creator, it's, we should think about more like content, I yes. think. I, th I think the best skill you can have is storytelling, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm like that's why uh, I'm really not when I, when I'm solo when uh, I'm really really not big fan of uh, gimbal. Gimbal, really yeah. Really annoying. Really annoying for me is is evils material. <laughs> I mean, it's heavy. First of all, yeah, heavy. <laughs> it's heavy. It's, yeah. it's as a solo film where like you're walking with this thing in your hand. Not comfortable. Not comfortable at all. Uh, and Big. I, uh, there, there is something nice about this perfection and stabilizing your, your footage, but there's also something nice in imperfection. Mm. And I think gimbal is too much of the perfection. Exactly. Yeah. I like I imperfection. Mm. Yeah. Me that, too. But, but yeah. that's that's subjective. That's a personal decision. Do you, uh, between like uh, YouTubers who work in uh, Korea, um, in the level of uh, like a, uh, <coughs> creation or idea of a creation or in the level of production, do you like certain person? Like, do you have a reference that you... In Korea? Yeah, in Korea. No, not really. Or in Earth? Um, yes. Uh, bald and Bankrupt? I don't... Okay. Uh, we just... can look it up. It's um, a British bald, as the name says, YouTuber who used to vlog mostly in uh, Soviet countries. Oh, sorry. Bold and bankrupt. Yeah, there you go. Okay. He inspired me uh, w with the way he tells a story, mm. what he shows, mm. uh, what he not shows. I see that. I see why uh, you find find him interesting. Not because he's bald, but <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no. Yeah. Uh, and then there's uh, Harold Balder, another YouTuber. Uh, he was actually in South Korea recently. Oh, okay. Uh, he's did, you from... the, did you have the collaboration with him? Now, I, I, I have an opinion about that. There's this guy. Um, okay. I love him. He always inspired me. He, uh, he's one of the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, and then knowing that he came or that he was in Korea, I was very excited. So what I did, I, I wrote a comment on his channel and said, hey, welcome to Korea. And these days I have the check mark next to my name. Mm. So he, he noticed the comment. He said, ah, oh, thank you. 
And then on Instagram, I just wrote him a personal message, which I never do, but this is the first time I did that. I said, hey, uh, you have always inspired me. You're actually one of the reasons where I am uh, today. Uh, and I want to thank you for that. So if there's anything I can do in return, yeah, just just let me know. You probably get this question a lot, but just want to throw it out there. You don't even have to reply. Mm -hmm. And then he suddenly replied. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, you seem like a guy who knows uh, Korea quite well. So we started a conversation and we talked a little bit about some cultural aspects and some things I think mm -hmm. uh, that he might find interesting for a video. So uh, yeah, we, we are or we were in touch mm -hmm. for a moment. And oftentimes it's quite difficult to reach a YouTuber with over... 2 million subscribers or 1 million subscribers. Yes. yes. For to me, that was like a little victory. And many people, they would probably ask him like, hey, do you want to meet or, but I think there's a bit of, in a Korea, Koreans would probably say Budam. Mm. It's nice to have a chat to him, but the moment I ask him, hey, you want to meet or you want to collab? He feels Budam. Ah, yeah? You feel that? I, I feel that I don't want to okay. burden him with my fanism or okay. excitement. Mm. We are in touch now. If he thinks that I'm a person that I might help him because he can see my Instagram, my YouTube, then he will ask me because we're now in touch. Mm. But if I ask that, yeah, no, I just, I didn't feel I, I know him well enough. Nah. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This no. kind of person, he can't really refuse. I don't know. They, but but I'm talking from my own experience. Okay. I get sometimes emails uh, from Dutch people that are living in Korea. Yeah. And they're really friendly emails, super nice, kind, warm-hearted emails. And they're like, I, I'm a fan of your content. I like you. And then the last paragraph in the email is always, you want to hang out, have a beer? Or can yeah, I yeah. can I be in your video of some kind? Yeah. And it just makes me uh, like, like I want to reply your kind email, yeah. but I don't want to reject you at the same time. Yeah, yeah. You you put me on the spot. Now I need to reply your email and I need to say no. Mm. Because what what for me would be a reason to meet you, just yeah. a random subscriber? Yeah. What if suddenly like all thousand or two hundred thousand subscribers write me email like that? Yeah. Like, should I start ignoring them, even though it's a really kind email, which is not who I am? I want to reply everything. Yeah. But then because of that one question, it becomes Buddham. a burden, burden <laughs> Yeah, like because he's not he's not a YouTuber. He's nothing he gives me in return. It's just basically me. Got me, like making space in my agenda to meet a random subscriber. Mm. Like, yeah, no, I, I, I find it slightly, uh, uh, inconsiderate mm. from him. Mm. I mean, we we are both creators, right? So that's that's a collaboration. Thankfully, yeah, no, yeah, but that's <laughs> I I love to appear anywhere with anyone who wants to talk about like yeah, you know, we can talk as equals as content creators. I'm helping you out. You can help me out. Yeah. Um, but but not just a subscriber asking that question can be a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So I became very careful in approaching other people too, <laughs> because from fanism, from from my fan point of view. Yeah. There is a lot of people who ask you those kind of things. Yeah. Not videographer, not content creator, but just no normal person. Yes. Uh. <laughs> and since I started my new project. Ah, okay. It happens a lot. New project, your YouTube channel? My uh, Dong series. Ah. My neighborhood series. By the way, I know one person who is really interested in you <laughs> to collab with you. He talked about you, so... Uh, so uh, but yeah, did I, sorry, I understand. You have a lot of success. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to sound arrogant. Yeah. I'm just trying to explain why I didn't ask him that question. Because mm. I know how it feels... To yeah, me, yeah. and I want to be as friendly as possible, and I want to help everyone. But asking to to spend like an hour together, two hours together, that's quite a big deal. Yeah, with yeah. a complete stranger. Yeah, 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 it's not a collaboration. Mm. And he said, "Oh, it can be in your video." I mean, <laughs> why? You know, like <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know you. I, I'm. I don't even see your video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And they You're often too anonymous. Don't have. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, I've, well, I wish I could say yes to everyone. Mm. But just not. And because of that question, I feel very Buddha to reply that email. Yeah. <laughs> like that. But. Um, Does it make sense? <laughs> or, yeah, yeah. or do you think I'm, uh, do I sound arrogant? Like, cause no, I, no, not at all. Okay. I have a, uh, my brother, I have two brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, one of one of him, uh, one of them is, uh, he's really famous in Busan. I'm, I'm come from Busan. Okay. 
So he's a really big uh, influencer on uh, Instagram and everything. So uh, what happened uh, between us is uh, he's a really busy guy. So everyone want to want to meet him for alcohol reason, for <laughs> partying reason, for uh, like a collaboration reason. A lot of people like suggest something every day, like a lot of DM every day. So uh, what happened is even if uh, he, he visit one time in Seoul, I, I can't see him. <laughs> that level. Uh -huh. So... Uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, when he was uh, like a kind of starting to having a big follower, he started to refuse that uh, we meet, but kindly. I was I was like uh, kind of hurt because you're my brother, but, right? Uh, family. Yeah, you're my family, but uh, you're not. Uh, I'm not random person. I, I'm not just a friend, you know. But uh, you refuse. <laughs> well, I visit uh, Busan, uh, but you said you said to me you you don't have time. But uh, I I'm, I come from France, you know, man. <laughs> Just uh, having having have some time. But uh, mm. now I I can really understand because uh, he really there is so much person who suggest something, who looking for something behind uh, from him. And uh, for example, um, there's a I don't want to mention the name at all. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a really big, uh, big, big famous person in in Korea. He's a really celebrity. I don't know. I don't really know him, but uh, for some occasion, I I met her. I met him, and uh, on the street, uh, I met him uh, randomly, like again. And uh, I said, "Hey," uh, I was uh, like uh, riding bicycle. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, "Hey, uh, how I do?" And uh, he was like avoiding to look at me. And I said, uh, do you remember me or something like this? And he said, yes, 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 yes. And I'm staring in the air, you know. Oh, <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. But he's, uh, if you know, he's mega famous, mega famous. Every Korean knows, mm. like mega famous. So I said, ah, so, uh, so uh, like how's the life or something like this? He said, oh, okay, uh, thank you, bye. And uh, he, he left. Okay, and at that time uh, I got really hurt because uh, it's it's really kind gesture for me to like uh, having an encourage to go to say hello and how do you do, even if uh, I don't know him like uh, personally uh, not too much, but he left, and then uh, I I got hurt uh, for the first uh, for the first uh, at the beginning, but. Uh, at the same time, I was kind of understanding him because uh, maybe in his life there are so much people, uh, so much people, like uh, who try to find something behind of him or something like this. So he maybe he has. Uh, I don't know because I I never became famous, so uh, I imagine uh, I try to understand him. Yeah, as long as you're not being rude. Yeah, I mean, that, that was case, kind of rude, but yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Because I, I don't think being rude is a decision, right? You, you can, you should control your emotions. Mm. You, you can politely say no, or you can politely say, "I have no time now." Mm. That there's always a polite way of rejecting. Yeah, I think you should try that ninety nine point nine percent of the time, unless people approach in a really rude way, then you can be rude. Mm. <laughs> but. Yeah, no, but being friendly is also important. Wasn't I rude? No, you, I you? don't think you were rude at all. And especially <laughs> not to you. Oh, no, no, not, a, no, not, a, not, <laughs> not, no, no, not at all. But what I, I forgot to mention, uh, in addition to your story and mine, sometimes I write a polite email and I say, no, uh, you know, I don't think this, this fits my content mm. because I'm also a producer and I need to decide whether it's good for my content as well. And then when I say that, I never hear back from them. Mm. So, they only expect a yes yeah. or go good news. But when it's a rejection, a polite rejection, they don't reply anymore. Mm. So that means they only wanted something from me. And that hurts my feelings too. It's like I'm taking- You're someone who always reply. Always reply. Oh, okay. But when it's a rejection, I never get a reply to the rejection. It's mm. not, not like, oh, thank you for taking my email into consideration and I understand. So that's why I became a bit more- irritated by these requests because I know if I say no they will never say something back again yeah again uh, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> again uh, it's not been a long time uh, there was a really big uh, like a youtuber who contacted me uh -huh. and uh, he suggested to like uh, invite him uh, in my in my podcast 
uh, what a what an honor, what an honor, uh, and uh, I was really thankful uh, for for him uh, to think about me, and it's, it was really like an honor for me. But the thing is, uh, I was about to say yes, sure, uh, let's do a podcast together. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's good because I can get I can earn some uh, follower. I don't know, maybe, uh, but uh, maybe I can learn something from from him. But uh, I was like watching uh, his YouTube and uh, his vibe, and I was checking. I said to myself, um, maybe I, I have nothing to talk about with with him because uh, even if you're inter- interesting uh, person with uh, your like audience, your friends, it's not really my vibe, you know. It's not my uh, thing. So uh, I was like, uh, I made, uh, I wrote a mail like this long <laughs> to to refuse really kindly, but uh, I I said I just said I can do everything for you if you if you need help or something like this. But uh, I kind of studied uh, your like a YouTube channel or something like this. It's not really like uh, my thing, you know. So I kind of gently rejected, but. You know, and also uh, to growing a YouTube channel for algorithm, uh, for a marketing reason, for a commercial reason. Uh, personally, I, I'm really interested in the marketing, so I believe that um, inviting inviting uh, like a random person uh, for a podcast studio or like a really like a large uh, random person for your YouTube channel is not good for uh, growing your YouTube channel because YouTube uh, like the precise taste, mm-hmm. precise color of a YouTube, one YouTube channel. So uh, to make one uh, precise color, inviting a random person is not really good for our algorithm, I think. Um, not sure exactly, but mm. I, I do, I, I can imagine. Mm. I, I understand what you mean. Hmm. And I do respect your decision rejecting a really big YouTuber to be on the show. Yeah, because... Uh, Seriously, you know, sometimes uh, I like to watch some some people, some some person, but uh, not to talk. You know. Yeah, no, no, exactly. Uh, you you asked me at the beginning of the show what are my resolutions, right? Or was it before we started recording? Yes. Okay. Well, I said like I don't really do resolutions, but there's actually one. Now I think about it. Mm. From this year on, I will only say yes to things that are related to my work mm. that will either help me or like because last year I said yes to pretty much everything I did weird media shoots that are so unrelated to my work and cost a lot of my time so I could do, couldn't really work on my own videos. Mm. So this year I will just, I don't care about size of other collaborators, or what, it doesn't matter, but if it's related to my work, I'm happy to do so. Mm. But if it's unrelated, let's say a really big YouTuber asked me to do something together, but it's unrelated to my own channel or work, mm. now why would I do that? Like it, Then I'm just wasting my own precious time. I think focus is important as a creator. It's the way to stay as an artist or creator, mm-hmm. maybe, to be able to refuse some gesture, or some 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 proposition, and something like this. Saying no is difficult. Look at the Frank Cushion. Do you do you know Frank Cushion? Frank Cushion? Yeah. No, okay. doesn't ring a bell. He's a R&B singer. But, uh, he never like uh, collab with anybody, and uh, he never like make his album uh, really rarely. So I don't know. It's uh, if you're sure about about some some subject, uh, you should really try hard to keep maybe. Yes. And uh, yeah, this podcast also because uh, uh, at the beginning I was like hesitating between. Uh, uh, to make a podcast in Korea, Korean, in French also, or mix. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said to us, no, it, it's not going to work. So for 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 now, I keep uh, this concept, podcast in English, but uh, I don't know. I'm kind of open mind. Uh, I don't know. I, I really try hard to like keep the concept, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it depends who, who you want to target I also struggle a lot with it I struggled a lot with this in the past like I'm in Korea my audience is Korean for some reason like it's it's that was not intentional for me it just happened yeah. algorithms picked up on this um, but I'm making videos in English which is my second language yeah. I would feel 
a lot more comfortable in Dutch. But I, why? Because I'm native Dutch. Mm. Like it's just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's like my my mother sorry, tongue. Yeah. yeah, yeah so English is still like switching the button or thinking a lot about certain words. Or tr like it's it's becoming harder to articulate myself, even though everything is clear in here. Mm. It doesn't always come clear out of my mouth. Um, but I chose English because I wanted to reach a bigger mm. audience. Plus, I don't Me really too. understand. I don't think Dutch people are necessarily super interested in k Korean mm, no. culture. I mean, here and there, but I'm mostly K-pop or K-drama, but not so, so much. So small target. Yeah, it's a, it's a, exactly. It's too small of a niche. Mm. Yeah. And being uh, being able to speak in English you know, on the internet is such such a big advantage. Yeah. It is. I think even uh, even for athlete and everything like, if Conor McGregor uh, couldn't like uh, speak English, uh, he he couldn't like become uh, that that big. Uh. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like I I I make a podcast in English. It's not because uh, I I speak well English, but I speak a little bit. But uh, I think even even if uh, the level of English is really not good, but uh, uh, for now I believe that it's better better than. Uh, Making a podcast in in Korean about I my, think, my yeah. interest, yeah, because uh, it's the result, you know. Um, I I didn't even do uh, on purpose, but uh, like ninety uh, percent of uh, my audience, uh, they are like uh, thirty five age uh, years old uh, American dude. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, the podcast is really like American culture. Are they? Um American American or Korean American? American American. American American. Yeah, I I don't know actually. Okay. So, but uh, I can't see that with uh, my YouTube studio. Uh, yeah, sometimes you like they write comments like I'm like Korean Americans. So. Uh, I didn't see that for for now. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, I'm I imagine that I don't really talk about the Korean culture. So I imagine that sometimes I uh, yeah. I think half half of the time um, I talk about Korea. Half of the time, uh, I talk about the uh, other thing because, mm. yeah, I wanted to like uh, talk about you, your point of view about uh, the phenomenon that uh, like a foreign person, uh, a foreign YouTuber person, uh, uh, talk about uh, Korea and uh, commercializing kind of uh, Korea, and uh, there is kind of red ocean, and uh, you you didn't uh, you said that you didn't do on purpose to get in uh, that kind of red ocean yeah you you're you're just uh, being yourself and uh, you're you you play with uh, your own like interest right i, I don't want to jump into the red ocean because i hate it mm. when i get money mm. and i'm i'm being told what to say and what to make and what to do so i lose my independency as a producer mm. and that happens quite a lot especially when you get fundings mm. to make a video in korea they are not expecting you to uh, talk about controversies or your honest opinion. They just basically expect you to make something pretty lovely. Uh, yeah. Oh, what what delicious! Or this is nice and this is good. Like, I know Korea is a really nice country, but not everything is so <laughs> fantastic here. You know, like, like, yeah. like. But the moment you complain, you become, I don't know, a thorn, mm. like the thorn in the eye, or what's the expression? Well, I'm that foreign sometimes. I really I'm, I'm just un, I'm uncensored, honest, mm. and um, I, I like to show all the f all the faces of Korea as as much as possible. Mm. And and what I mean with showing is I want to learn. Mm. Like I'm just like I said, I'm a foreigner in Korea. I'm not an expert about Korea in Korea. Mm. I'm learning along the way, so it's just following my curiosity, mm. literally. Uh, and while what I learn, that's what I want to show my audience. Mm. That's how it is and how it goes. Um, and I, I don't act knowing that I will get funding. I just act knowing that I think it's good content. Mm. And whether uh, funding will come because of that, that will be a win, a plus. Like, mm. okay, nice. But I could, if I want to, act in a way so I can get all the funding. I, I just, I know I can go this direction and I will get a lot more funding. Mm. From government institutions or companies in in Korea, that for for now you get funded by a um, company. I sometimes get sponsorships. Okay, for example, uh, like the most recent one was um, Gedong, the neighborhood Gedong, 
was actually a, lo a local government institution, and they, they wanted me to show uh, the neighborhood the way I always do in this series. Mm. Um, and they wanted to attract more people to the neighborhood. Mm. And I always do that by uh, showing all the stories that mm. the neighborhood has to offer uh, in my own way. So just honestly. So that was, that was not a sponsorship with a lot of conditions. Mm. But I, I, I had other sponsorship like uh, Cambly, English uh, teaching platform, mm. um, uh, Surfshark, it's like VPN company. Mm. Um, I worked together uh, a lot with the Kuka Bonbu Ministry of Patriots and, and Veterans Affairs, mm. but also um, um, the Tongilbu Ministry of Unification. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or the Wagyobu, also a Ministry oh, yeah. of Foreign Affairs. Yeah. I'm actually, now I think about it, I work a lot with the government, but not it's not so visible. My only condition is I don't mind working together, but I will just, just let me do what I want to do. Mm. The moment they tell me, oh, do this or do that, then... They do that, right? Yeah, uh, quite often. But I work together on the veteran. Uh, like, I, I make different kind of content on my channel, and one uh, segment is veterans content. Yeah, I interview veterans. So there, there's not much. There are not many conditions, right? Because the story of the veteran is already just as beautiful as it is. Mm. But the moment you explore Korea, I don't really like to accept sponsorship unless it's a private company mm. that doesn't have a, a huge agenda, mm. you know, a, agenda uh, to force upon me. Mm. So I'd rather just make the content myself. Mm. I, I was wondering, um, you have a lot of followers you know, on your, your YouTube channel, but um, um, the the channel uh, was growing uh, like a prog progressively or like a suddenly, like a, by one certain video. Both. Both? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the first huge growth was after the North Korea series. Okay. And... Um, With one video, you you earn uh, how much follower, kind of? Oh, I don't like a couple of ten thousands. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was so. That was a series. North Korea was a series, and all the videos did well. The problem then <laughs> was, I didn't continue making the same kind of content. I started making all other kinds of things because I cannot keep going to North Korea or other uh, like dangerous countries, so to say. Um, so that that quickly flattened out. Then um, my next jump up was with the veteran series. Mm. Those videos got a lot of views. Yeah, I saw. Um, people followed me for veteran content, mm. but veteran content was just one of the things I did. I also made a lot of other videos. So the alg algorithms got confused. They're like, oh, okay, so your, your audience is uh, someone who likes to watch veteran videos, but so therefore we won't give you a lot of views on the other content because it's not veteran related. Mm. So it's like, no, but the other content is actually what I really like to make. Mm. And the veterans is just what I like to make, but it's not sustainable. Mm. It's difficult to find like 90 plus year old veterans around the world. Mm. So I switched again until I started uh, the current series, Welcome to My Dong. Mm. And this series was just uh, my personal jackpot. It, it's, it creates organic growth, mm. not, not these high peaks, but just steady growth, but mm. quite fast. Mm. And uh, the it's going to be your pension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that's that's how it goes. Yeah, it's better this kind of content. It's like a, you, if you see the graphic, uh, uh, this kind of content is not good. No, yeah, this content is really good thing. Is uh, really. This is not good for your mental as well. <laughs> it's like suddenly you win a million dollars. Yeah. Oh, what do I do now with my life? You right? Like th that's how it feels. Yeah. And what goes up comes down but i was wondering um could you sleep when you just earn like a ten thousand uh, ten thousand follow one time by one video could you sleep no i was super excited yeah i imagine re that. refreshing my analytics like every second you're refreshing right yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was fun uh fun but stressful to put a lot of pressure on you yeah <laughs> i mean uh, with my channel i am It's not uh, it's not my first time to like making YouTube video, but uh, I make a lot for uh, like enterprise or something like this. But uh, I earn uh, sure if uh, the channel was already uh, big, uh, like uh, I can get a lot of view and something like this. But uh, it's not my I I 
I made a, a kind of quite some video uh, who had uh, a lot of view, but uh, it's my first time to like make my own channel. And uh, recently I got uh, like, a, it, it's nothing for you, like a, like a 12,000 view with a short, short form video. Ah, yeah. At that time, it was like a, I was getting suddenly that view. Up. I was too excited. <laughs> <laughs> I got even shocked, but uh, that's why I, I asked you, like, if you earn like 10,000 videos, like a sudden, 10,000 view, uh, like a follower suddenly. But it's, it's, I know it's much for me too. Like, even though I, uh, I, I'm a bigger YouTuber now, I definitely don't forget where I'm, where I came from. Mm. I started out as a small YouTuber. I worked myself up. I worked like 80 hours in a week to work myself up. Yeah. And I remember getting my first 100 views. I remember getting my first 100 subscribers. Mm. And every milestone was a celebration. And it still is. Like I'm I'm still I still appreciate it when only 1000 people click my video. And uh, it, it's relatively uh, low compared to my subscriber count, but it's still thousand. Like imagine those thousand people in a room. Yeah, they all watch your video. That's pretty nice. I mean, uh, in the future, do you have a plan to make uh, another channel? No. With uh, another subject? No. Uh, well, I, I, why I don't I don't know why I say no. Um, I've tried many different channels. <laughs> yeah. And they all failed. But in the future, hopefully, uh, or maybe even a podcast channel. That's I've considered that. But not now, because I've, I've opened up second channels and uh, you think you can do it. You think you have like 10 hands, but you don't. You have only two hands. So you can only manage one channel well, unless you have a team that works for you. There's a lot of work to do. It has a lot of work to do. So if you think, if you consider opening up a second channel as a small YouTube, I would say, no, don't do it. <laughs> I've tried many times. Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. But uh, for your for your channel for now you you spend uh, I imagine that um, I really felt that uh, when I w was watching your all your video you spent uh, like a majority of time to uh, like uh, make a script and uh, like a planning uh, shooting right shooting and a planning project yes not uh, uh, like editing not ah uh... uh, both um, because now when I want to film a neighborhood mm. I need to research really well. Like yeah. Namu Wiki, watch other YouTube videos. I saw the work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, I script things here and there, usually the intro. Yeah. Uh, and then from then on, I just follow certain points that I want to mention. But the way I mention it, it just happens. Yeah. Interactions on the street, they just happen. Um, but to create some depth in my video, I plan certain meetings sometimes. Mm. Or I invite a guest that I think will add a lot of value to the video. Mm. There's a lot of planning. Mm. Um I never film my videos in one go. <laughs> I always have to go back another day, sometimes three days, mm. just go back, get the plan. Sometimes when I film with a guest, I only have the conversation, mm. but no B-roll, nothing, no footage that can uh, complement the story. Mm. So I need to go back and just film the buildings that we talked about, the story, yeah, to, to make the story more interesting. Mm. Uh, sometimes I think it's not enough, so I have to go again and talk to other people. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it takes more than a week to make one video for me. What's your next video? Next uh, video? Uh, Nam Yeondong. Nam Yeondong, where is it? It's in the south of Seoul. Oh, okay. It's like a neighborhood in the south. What's, um, what's there? <laughs> this was one of the few neighborhoods that I, I, I found personally not super interesting. But there's uh, the former Belgium embassy. Uh, ah. There's a historical site, like cultural heritage site. Yeah. Um, there's a um, uh, some kind of Dal Dongne, mm. which is uh, uh, it literally means Moon Village, yeah. and refers to a shanty town, so post Korean War uh, refugee town. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's something similar, but you wouldn't expect it in between all the high rise, so not many people know about it. There are some um, uh, temples like Kwanansa. Um, established by uh, great master Doson, like really old uh, Buddhist monk mm. who, who created some of the most important Buddhist temples here in Seoul. Mm. Um, so yeah, here and there, there are some interesting stories. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna watch. But but my next big video is gonna be Hongde. I'm really curious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, what about what uh, you you're gonna you want to talk about Hongde? 
probably not what you expect. <laughs> it's what good. I expect? Uh, I can see it in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Hongdae is cliche in many people's eyes. Uh, it's just these days it's K-pop youth. Uh, 23 years old girl who mainstream studied, studying Korean, yeah. European. <laughs> that, that's what most people think Hongdae is. But I dig deep. Yeah. I like, I, I'm not sure if you watch, maybe you can watch later. My ET1 yes. video is uh, one of the big uh, videos I made, mm. two months of preparation, a lot ah. of guests, and I go deep. And every comment underneath the video says, wow, I didn't know this about ET1. Mm. That's what I want to achieve with every of my video. My videos are not made for uh, contempor like temporarily entertainment. Mm. It, they are as valuable uh, today I, I feel that, yeah. as they are maybe 10 years later. Mm. It, it's just... A documentary. Yeah, it, it, exactly, that's exactly what it is, a documentary. So in Hongdae, yeah. I go uh, back to when Hongdae was a town for artists. I go back when uh, Hongdae was the underground scene for punk rock. Hmm. When, uh, punk rock? Yeah, punk, you know, uh, ah, the, the yeah. rockers <laughs> yeah. uh, wearing those leather jackets and something with their hair. Like uh, there was a whole, whole underground scene for rock lovers. Uh, and they... They um, painted Hongdae mm. uh, before the gentrification started, before big companies, corporates came in. And now if you drive through Hongdae, it looks more like uh, Broadway, New York. Yeah. Um, so I'm going through all these transformations. I'm going through the history of Hongik University, uh, Dong Gyodong, Song Gyodong, uh, Dang In Dong, Sang Su Dong. They all are combined, considered Hongdae. Mm. It's funny because most people who've been to Hongdae have never been to Hongik University. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't there's like they go to Hongdae but never to Hongik University. And Hongdae literally means Hongik de Hakyo, right? Yeah. Um but these days Hongdae is also considered Yonnamdong, maybe even Mangwondong, mm. uh Hapchongdong. Um yeah, and all these neighborhoods have their own history. Like why is it called Sokyodong? Why is it called Dongkyodong? Why is it called Hapchongdong? I'm I'm going deep. <laughs> I I want to like uh, make a lot of meme of a uh, eight uh, eight x x x site of a Hongdae station. Oh, x site eight of a Hongdae station. Yeah, that's a popular thing to do, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm over here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think it's good for today. You have a last word for before the ending. Um, but I, I I'm a full time YouTuber. Maybe I want to clarify that. I uh, but I also wrote a book on North Korea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I wrote a book on North Korea. Um, but I do uh, a lot of media work and um, a lot of behind the scene work that people don't directly see. But yeah, mostly YouTube. Mm. Busy enough. <laughs> okay. Okay. Th thank you for coming today. Thank you for inviting me. Mm. Okay. See you next time. Let's uh, let's meet at the uh, Hongdae Excite Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.